I wanted to build the ultimate Plex server, so today I'm going to pair this Ryzen 3900X with the P2000. Okay, not really. I'll try to do a Ryzen 9 Plex performance video in the future, but the reality is pairing these two things up would be completely pointless if all you're after is Plex performance. I'll explain exactly why that is, along with how to appropriately size your Plex server and avoid bottlenecks in today's quick follow-up video. I've gotten a lot of emails, comments, and requests to test the P2000 with AMD CPUs. The fact of the matter is, as of the posting of this video, Plex simply won't switch from hardware to software transcoding once your GPU or iGPU is at 100% load. So if you pair a P2000 with something like a Ryzen 3900X, you won't get any better Plex performance than if you had paired it with a Ryzen 5 2600. I fully expect this could change at some point in the future, but as of today, what that means for any of us leveraging hardware transcoding with our Plex Media servers is if we pair a P2000 with the wrong CPU, let's say the Threadripper 2950X with its 16 cores and 25,000 passmark score, we will ultimately end up with the CPU resources that will be left untapped. This obviously assumes you are using your Plex server for nothing else but Plex. If you run virtual machines or other jobs on your Plex server, the CPU will obviously get utilized and adding a P2000 is a great way to free up resources for other tasks, which is exactly why I have dual E5 2690v2s in my server. This topic can be complicated, but I've tested the P2000 in a wide variety of builds, ranging all the way on the low end from an i5-2400 that scores 5900 in Passmark, to dual 2690v2 CPUs that score 23400 in Passmark on the high end. What I've found is that there is a sweet spot if you are going strictly for efficiency and you won't be using your Plex server for anything but being a Plex media server. I'm going to keep this video brief as I think this is the best way to effectively drive the point I'm trying to make in today's video home. Here I transcoded H.265 with AC3 audio at 1080p down to H.264 at 1080p. With the quality set on maximum, you can see that while the i5-2400 scores around 5900 in Passmark, it can only support 19 transcodes with the P2000 at full load while the E3-1226v3 with its 7500 passmark score allows the P2000 to hit 24 transcodes. If you move all the way up to an i7-6700K that scores 11,000 in passmark, you can get roughly 27 transcodes, and that's where you should stop. Because even when stepping up slightly to an i5-8600K that gets 12,800 in passmark, you will still only see 27 transcodes. If you jump up yet again to dual E5-2690V2 CPUs that score 23,000 in Passmark, you still only get 27 transcodes. It does not make sense to pair a P2000 with an overly powerful CPU unless you plan on using those newly freed up CPU resources for something other than Plex. As I mentioned previously, Plex does not automatically switch to software transcoding when a GPU is saturated. So that means it does not effectively load balance transcode jobs between the CPU and GPU or integrated GPU. The CPU still handles things like retrieving the data from disk, serving it up to a GPU via the PCIe bus, or transcoding audio, which is why you can't pair a P2000 with an i5-2400 and get the absolute most out of the P2000. What this also means is that if you are simply building a machine for Plex and have no other plans for it, you really don't need an overly powerful CPU to get the most out of a P2000. I think a good rule of thumb is, if your CPU is of a newer generation, Haswell or newer for instance, you really only need a CPU that scores 10 to 11K in Passmark. Now if you want to run virtual machines, or this is a dual purpose Plex media and storage server, you might want a bit more cores to handle those other tasks while still giving the P2000 enough resources to reach its full potential. The reality is, however, most of us do not need to support 27 simultaneous transcodes. So a slower CPU, even something like an E3-1226v3, while still bottlenecking the P2000 from reaching its 27-ish transcodes in our previous test, is still a totally respectable pairing. 
The main purpose of this video was to inform our viewers that it is not necessary to pair a P2000 with a crazy powerful CPU like the Threadripper 2950X. The only way that I could see this as being a rational pairing is if you are doing other things with the CPU like running virtual machines, Docker containers, or other services that will make use of those extra CPU cycles. If you have a requirement for some insane number of transcodes or just want to build the ultimate Plex server, you're better served pairing a powerful CPU with a more powerful GPU like a P5000. As I showed you in our RTX video here, the P5000 is a great choice for someone looking for something a bit faster than a P2000 for under $1,000. Thanks for watching today's rant. Thank you all for your support and feedback in our last video series. I learned a lot interacting with all of you and asking questions about your builds. If you want your server to be part of one of our future videos or have questions, please shoot me an email at alex at slothtechtv.com. I want to pick a few of your builds and make videos about them. Oh, and please like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really keeps me motivated to continue to put out good content for all of you. Thank you.